In this tutorial, we'll look at the multi-camera feature in SmartShooter 5. SmartShooter 5 has robust support for workflows that involve using multiple cameras simultaneously. This includes high volume photography, product photography, and photogrammetry for 3D modeling. By default, SmartShooter 5 will come with a single camera license. So let's look at the upgrade process. To start, go to the Help menu and select Manage License. This window will show all your current license information, including the number of cameras that are currently active. To upgrade, click the Upgrade button. This will take you through the upgrade process on our website so you can add additional cameras. Once completed, hit Recheck License and you'll see that information update. Once your license has been activated for multiple cameras, you're ready to go. Most of the information we need is in the cameras window. To open the cameras window, if it's not currently visible, you can always do so in the view menu and select cameras. When you connect new cameras, this is where your cameras will appear. I'll connect two cameras here and we see SmartShooter registers it instantly. In the cameras panel, you have access to all kinds of information associated with each camera. You can always show or hide different columns depending on your preference. You'll see some columns are marked with the orange exclamation point indicating a mismatch of settings. Likewise, the camera controls panel shows that same mismatch to draw your attention to that area. Cameras will come with their default names, but some workflows, it'll be easier to rename those with more useful names. You can do that in the flyout menu by right clicking on the camera name. This opens a dialog box, allowing you to type in a new name. I'm using the name front and top in order to indicate the camera position. This approach will help better manage multiple camera workflows. For workflows where you have a large number of cameras, it may also be useful to group certain cameras together. You can do that with the set group command or the group field in the cameras panel. Now let's take a look at one approach that can be used to help manage the large numbers of the images that will be produced with a multi-camera workflow. We can use the name policy to do this. So let's start by opening up the Preferences or Options window in Smart Shooter and going to the Name Policy window. This is where you can create the parameters for how Smart Shooter will name your files. The file name expression controls the file renaming, and the token or substitution characters below will allow you to substitute text in as you go. A forward slash will also create a subfolder. We'll use this approach here. I'm going to use the camera name, the letter C, inside of brackets to indicate the token, and then a forward slash to indicate a subfolder. That means the camera name will be created as a folder name, and everything after will be the file name. I'm going to hit OK here so we can see that in action. To start with, I'm going to switch to the active camera set to multiple so that both cameras are triggered here, and I'm going to hit the shoot button to create images with each camera. We see those appear in the film strip as we would expect, but let's look at the folders. We're inside the photo download directory here, and we can see two subfolders have been created, one for each of the camera names, and the images are then placed inside of each folder based on which camera created the image. And the file name continues the sequence regardless of the camera. Let's go back over to Smart Shooter. We can see that one of the images is pretty dramatically underexposed, so we need to correct that. So we want to make an adjustment to a single camera here, so we need to select that camera in the active camera section of camera controls. With that camera selected, that means any setting that I adjust will only affect that camera. I'm going to open up the aperture here to give us more, some additional exposure, and let's try that again. 
I'm going to switch back to multiple to generate two new images. And we can see things are starting to look better, but now when we look at that front camera, we're also seeing a little bit of underexposure. So I'm gonna use the same method and open up the aperture there on that front camera and switch back to multiple and shoot a new pair of images. And again, things are looking good. Now that top camera is a little bit underexposed. So let's just open up the aperture one more time using the same method and create two new images and things are looking pretty good. Let's just check back at our folders to see that each of those new images was placed in the corresponding folder. So you can see Smart Shooter is sorting those based on that file name expression we created earlier. Live View can always be an important tool when you're tethering, and this is all the more true when you're using multiple cameras. So Smart Shooter has a Live View panel, which will allow you to enable Live View for your cameras. New with Smart Shooter 5, you're now able to open up multiple Live Views at the same time. You can do that in the View menu. You'll see a Live View section, which will allow you to up, open up to four Live View panels simultaneously. We can use the new docking feature to dock those together so that we can see them both at the same time. I'll enable the second live view here, and we can see that we're getting a live video feed from both cameras at the same time. And when I reach in here to make an adjustment, that's reflected immediately in both live view feeds as we would expect. Each live view window will have different settings that apply to that window. You can access that in the gear icon there, and you can select different cameras and control different aspects of the display. There's also the image overlay feature. We can select an image. I've got a square crop that I'd like to use in this case. And once I select that, that image can be loaded up in that live view display by clicking the show overlay button. Here we can see an overlaid image on the live view. This will allow me to adjust the camera's position according to that overlay and achieve better framing as a result. The image overlay has an independent slider which will allow you to set the opacity of that image so you can dial it down or up depending on your needs. Again, each Live View window will have an independent control for image overlay. I'm going to make a few new images here with the new framing. And now that I have that done, I can turn off the overlay associated with each Live View feed. As you can see, Smart Shooter 5 gives some pretty incredible control for workflows that use multiple cameras. That's the multi-camera feature in Smart Shooter 5.